Yeah, well, we had a hard time getting up and running. Let's run back over to a headline that came out on E&E News this morning. Former Japan official unstoppable contamination of the Pacific Ocean is seriously menacing the U.S. West Coast. And Fukushima now undeniably a global security issue. Security! Security! And can't be brought under control by a single state. About time. Now he's in Switzerland. And Switzerland, let's keep going. Expert, wave of radiation will be 10 times more than the entire world's nuclear test combined. Now, if you think about what's actually going on here, let me come back over to Dana, that Dana guy, the big ears. Here, I'll move in so you can see him a bit better. If you think about 10 times weapons tests, that's a cakewalk to compare to what's really going on here. If that's all it was, we'd be laughing. It'd still be horrific. It'd still be devastating. It still might be an extinction event. But what we got going on here is way different than that. But that's alluding to the seriousness of the problem. But if you take, and I'll give you some kind of a context for it, if you take Chernobyl and Fukushima and compare them, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. Fukushima, 1,700 days. Now, Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Yeah? Let's go and talk about that for one second. Hiroshima was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Where you tell, buddy? Where you tell when I want you? Show up here. Don't make me scroll like a loser. Oh, hang on, I'll get it. We'll get uh, 2006 article from the Guardian. Uh huh. Chernobyl was the world's worst nuclear environmental disaster at that time. But Chernobyl stopped after 10 days and spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs over 150,000 square miles of Europe. And so Switzerland, where that Japanese story is coming from. So 10 days was 400 Hiroshima bombs. Fukushima didn't stop. That's why they can't put a sarcophagus over Fukushima. Okay, let's get rid of that and go back over. Uh, Dana, stop doing shit. Hey, stop doing it, Dana. Okay, here we go. Back up over to the laptop. Wave of radiation will be 10 times more than the entire world's nuclear test. Now, let's come back to that one more time. Well, Chernobyl was 400 tests in 10 days. If Chernobyl lasted 30 days, it would have exceeded all the tests. Fukushima, each of the reactors at Fukushima. And so this is why the Paris has to talk about this stuff. But they won't. That's why they knocked down my site and they arrested 140 activists in France uh, were the same reasons. They wanted to get us out of the equation, get this conversation out of the public sphere. Don't want to mention at the same time that there's four meltdowns. You've got number one, and if you don't understand the meltdowns, hang on, Dina, jumping the gun on that one. Uh, all reactors were melted down. And so I'm going to show you these reactors, number one, number two, number three, number four. Each one of these are many, many uh, Chernobyls. Each one of these are makes Chernobyl look like a candlestick. Each one of these were uh, advanced uh, techniques, advanced fuel, advanced en enrichment, advanced reclaiming. So they reclaim the plutonium and uranium from unstable nuclear bombs is what was going on in Japan. That's why this is so devastating. So that's unit one. That's 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. You want to tow? 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. But they're considered really bad. But they don't bother showing you this over and over and over. They, they like showing you the one where the building's intact. Because that don't look anything near as bad as that, but it is. But also at the same time, Mox Fuel is the one, they, this number one you're looking at is the one they admit is Mox Fuel. There's a big pretty picture for you. Now when you look at that, that's considered 2 million reactors. The equivalency is 2 million times worse than any current reactor on the planet. I'll let that sink in for a second. There's only 440 reactors on the planet. That's considered 2 million times worse than any reactor on the planet. Uh, this is Unit 4. So this is why Paris uh, Climate Talks are not going to talk about this stuff. 
They don't want to know about that. That's why we couldn't get the stream to work. That's a fact. Uh, now, this building, look at that. They tore it apart. The fuel pools were up high above the reactor. The reactor is above that spot right there. And they'll ninny at a debt. They say, oh, no, then it's fine. And they claim it looked like that on the inside. And they claim the ceiling looked like that inside of that. They claim the ceiling looks like that inside of that. Can you wrap your mind around that? Okay, let's keep going. Dana. Okay, here we go. 400. Hell on earth. Go look it up. Vidal says 400. Now, he, he's not the only one. That's repeated since Chernobyl. Okay. So that's the agreed upon equivalent of 10 days of releases. And that's why they got a sarcophagus over is because it stopped after 10 days. And that's why you see the, the third sentence, 10 days spewed the equivalent of 400 Hiroshima bombs. All right. Are we on the same page yet? Is everybody with me? So a wave of radiation will be 10 times more than the entire world's nuclear test combined. It's a complete, uh, it's a complete disregard for the enormity of it. But nevertheless, that's a, good, that's a good number compared to every other number that the apologists have rolled out. I'm not saying uh, that this person is an apologist. What I am saying is that he understands the severity but he doesn't understand it or, you know, he's because of his position, he's forced to hold back, but still try to, you know, he's still trying to embark upon everybody, the implications, the significance, the enormity, the desperations of, what, of the situation that we're actually in. And like I was talking to Lonnie on the radio show this morning, she asked me, what would it take, in my opinion, my conjecture, my educated guess in that in reality, and I, my guess is six to ten million people would have to be sacrificed. And a lot of them will die within minutes. A lot of them die a day later, uh, five days later, a week later. And, you know, if you had the stats of all the homeless people went in there, I'd be able to give you a more accurate uh, depiction of, of how that'll play out. <coughs> but, I mean... You won't see Harvard or Stanford or Yale or Berkeley or MIT or any of the nuclear apologists or any of the nuclear scientists anywhere going into Fukushima. You see Woods Hole go down offshore and go into Japan and do lectures, but you won't see them at Fukushima. And that alone should tell you the gravity of how bad it truly is. And what is going on is they're trying to like, they're trying to stay on the site. See, they're trying to they're trying to keep the site before they lose the country and everything else. We'll lose, we're going to lose the planet anyway. We, we already lost the Pacific. There'll be no, no whales in a year's time. And there's nobody can tell me anything different about that because we went out and documented the entire coastline of British Columbia over 260 days. So we're not just some random person on the internet. Not that that's bad. It's just that we taken, we've taken this to a whole new level where we crowdfunded this operation, that's me coming back from the Queen Charlotte Islands. And just let me break this down for you in a second. You can see the charts up there. I'm heading over to Banks Island from Queen Charlotte lower end. And what that is, is the red arrows at the top of the page on your left-hand side. I was running uh, towards Prince Rupert at the top right-hand arrows. So I was running in that direction, and that's what you were seeing in the video. And we were using... We were using this particular operation, was crowdfunded, and instead of finding life symmetrically throughout the coastline, everywhere you went, we found uh, in the most wonderful spot imaginable, Louise Narrows is what you're looking at there. These pictures are from pre-Fukushima and now, right? And so this was now when we were on our expedition up there, and that's what it looked like for millions of years. That's what it looked like when you stood up, looking at to where your feet would stood up, and now that's what it looks like throughout the coastline. And that we covered 15,000 miles of the coastline. And so we are the authority on this. We know for a fact there's an extinction event. And that the 5,600,000 species are missing. And that's 600 algae, 480 species of worms, 78 species of sea anemones, 70 species of sponges, 78 species uh, rather of starfish, 76 species of sea anemones, and all of these come in multiple colors. 
each species. A very vibrant, very visible, a very colorful, a very uh, overwhelming environment, a very, uh, a very peaceful environment. And so you had to be careful everywhere you walk. Now you can go ashore anywhere, it don't matter, you walk anywhere you want. There's nothing there. And you can find that documentation at the nuclear proctologist. And I still, you know, we still haven't managed to get more pictures up at the nuclear proctologist from the last expedition. And that last expedition, we done all those green markers you see there, the top ones at the top, hidden towards the top of the page. Uh, the top four or five arrows is the only ones I got posted up to the nuclear proctologist. We, our ninth computer was killed and I was arrested and smeared in the mainstream media throughout North America, but in particularly in my own country of Canada. And where I don't hide away from anybody, I don't, I answer every phone call and every email. And, you know, if it's important, I'll answer it. I'll read it, certainly. And I get loaded. I'm just constantly bombarded. And I have no issues with that. That's who I am. That's what I'm here for. That's why my phone number is available. 604-223-0763. And that's, and like, I fight for all these creatures that are gone. They don't have a voice. I fight for all the people and all the animals and all the die-offs and all the emaciated whales. And I mean, all the whales and the birds and the seals and the sea lions, the mass mortality throughout the coastline, majority of them are dependent upon the krill. And, but it's not only just the krill that is gone, uh, the sardines, the squid, the herrings, the anchovies, the salmon, and over 300 of the migratory birds are gone off the coastline. But to go back uh, for one second, just to finish off what I was talking about, we went throughout that coastline, uh, and the species that covered every millimeter of that shoreline are now gone. But what happened, what I'm talking about is that the other four million species didn't recede it. How come? How is that possible? How is that even conceivable? Well, the other four million couldn't fit there because the 5,600 indigenous species dominated it. And, they, and the 600 algae dominated everything else. And all the mussels and snails and mollusks and periwinkles and abalones and scallops and oysters and little nicks and manila clams. And just a smorgasbord of shellfish itself is totally gone. Completely gone. That spot you're looking at, these pictures are all from the same spot pre-Fukushima right now. Pre-Fukushima... Right now, uh, and, and but a wide shot, uh, an iconic shot of that zone, uh, St. Uh, Louis Passage, that's up in the top left arrows on the inside of those archipelagos, those islands known as the Queen Charlottes. There's no industry there, and so everything is missing. And so Paris doesn't want to include that, but as a connotations for you, that's National Geographic's, a sea star dies. No worries about the urchins. So what, what they done, though, was this was the Smithsonian. They got the same thing. Now they, they ran National Geographic's version. They said, so far, urchins die-offs have been observed and documented at four sites around 200 miles between America coastline and in California. So then most are purple. But he says there are reports of mass mortalities, and some scientists think the green sea urchin. Now... I was also an urchin diver, a commercial harvester of sea urchins. And I hung out with the dive fleet during those expeditions around the coastline. Right? During, and so those arrows are representative sometimes of very long periods in one area. But I hung out with the divers for two months. And so I have a unique perspective on the entire coastline. I'm an ex-diver and I also worked every industry in both oceans in Canada, above the ocean, below the ocean. But I thrived in underwater. Uh, and Okay, and so France's climate change is ignoring this. And that they arrested people for sedition and dissent before there was sedition or dissent. And that I was arrested and have 12 restrictions against me. And that I can't, I can't talk about the names of the perpetrators of the mass murderers themselves. Uh, but I can only refer to it as University of Victoria, uh, Lapdogs, and uh, Woods Hole. Now, Woods Hole, both of these people were originally from Woods Hole, but Woods Hole is the PR firm itself. They are, they are the head of the beast. That's the head of the beast.
is Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And if you go look up how Woods Hole proliferates out with their academics and the studies that they do, it was Woods Hole that told you BP Corex was harmless, the three million gallons of. Now we know it was extremely carcinogenic, and it was worse than the oil spill itself. Now and then September 11, 2001, the dust. The the first responders were dying in droves now because they were breathing that dust. Was the dust was verified, allegedly verified, I should say, by Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, uh, and so that's why the firefighters and the first responders were allowed to go in there, and then. Woods Hole um, employees, former employees, and it's always this with Woods Hole, are rolled out, and particularly like uh, Japan, they were rolled out for Chernobyl. There are the people who said nobody died from Chernobyl. There are the people who said nobody got sick from Chernobyl. There are the people who only go by the official nuclear PR firm's uh, demented cover-up story of Chernobyl. Chernobyl, Coffee Annan, in 2002, the United Nations had said there was over 3 million children with permanent disabilities and that there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies, see, before you get cancer. So because you got radiation in you, it doesn't mean you're going to get cancer and you're going to die tomorrow morning. But there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies that could kill you that quick. Any of, not all of those, but uh, quite a percentage of these obviously can kill you. Uh, heart attacks and strokes, babies, women, children, particularly young girls. Um, there was a huge increase in the statistics. Uh, i got to keep coming and checking the audio. We're having huge problems with our live streams, particularly during the Paris talks, and the fact that I got anything to say about it uh, offends these people. And these people do not play by any rules. These people are maniacal. They actually, why we're here at live stream, we are streaming live stream because the FBI... Woods Hole, the RCMP Sandage Department in British Columbia, Canada, Constable Steve Crooks, and in tandem with the University of Victoria, without a warrant, worked together to censor me at YouTube and who knows where else. But that's admitted in the court documents now. So these are uh, very dangerous people. These are very, very, very dangerous people. And they don't play by any traditional rules and they don't have any moral compasses. Uh, I'm just going to come over to the comments section and make sure that's still happening because, you know, normally someone like me, you need a production producer, you need uh, technical directors, you need people to to work the gear on top of this and everything else. You need, you know, people in the background to get you through these live streams. To all, I have to do everything myself. And so this is all new software and equipment that we got to get used to. Because we, we've been destroyed over nine times. And so we're back at it again. After 20 days of being destroyed and dragged and smeared throughout Canada. And demonized and vilified and, and censored. And so I've had my freedom of speech taken away from me where I can't talk about things you can. You can talk about these things that I can't, but I'm not allowed to talk about them. Anybody in Canada can talk about it, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. And they don't have a leg to stand on. But they have the system they can use to bludgeon uh, people like me with, they assume. Obviously, that's not working too well. How's that working for you, by the way? Because I'm back. And I don't know, Mickey, why all cash shows is, as cast one way. I don't know. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm going to bring you over to the number two load that I got here. <laughs> here we go. Yay! Rain with 20 million particles of radio... Let me move myself over a little tiny bit. Rain... That's not what we want. Dina, can I get your act together? Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive... Oh, you don't. I'm not very fussy about that shot. Hang on, let me adjust this. I can do better than that, Dana. But you're not trying, Dana. Oh. Don't click shit like that, Dana. You get in trouble. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine. That's why the Paris Climate doesn't want you talking about this. Didn't want me after. That's why they put illegal strikes on my account on old videos in order to try to. to to disable me completely, and he did. 
That's why we're at live stream on top of that. I've been absolutely just attacked relentlessly and smeared relentlessly since I've been arrested with uttering death threats when I'm charged with criminal harassment of people who says that headline is not real and that Simon Fraser University is not telling you the whole story. But it's not just one headline. Let me get rid of that lower third for you so you can actually see it a bit better. Oh, but Simon Fraser University made it all up. Dina, Dina, you fear monger? Well, Canada now has 7,000 becquels a liter, a tritium. And that's why we have no snow in our mountains. So the Paris Climate Talks are not talking about, oh, there's no snow in the mountains, that's okay at all. But there might not be no snow somewhere else, so that's a big problem. Oh, the uh, glaciers are going to melt, so that's a big problem. But we just lost all the glaciers throughout Canada. I just went through the whole country, they're all gone. A thousand years of ice is gone. That's why the salmon couldn't get up the river. That's why my kid had to put down a beer a couple of weeks ago doing a salmon count. They've seen this, some salmon down by the shoreline, but it can't get up the river because there's no snow melt coming down like it has been for millions of years. And here was the bear in the river looking for anything to eat. They didn't. They had two guys, and he was the guide. And this bear spotted him, head down, and come towards him, and they had to put the bear down. He put that bear down, and he told me he didn't want to put the bear down. They were yelling at the bear, but the bear did. It, it was. It was going. It wanted to eat. And they've never experienced that kind of aggression before like that. But there was no salmon in the river. The beer scat is full of apples. Right now, that was like a month and a half ago. Because the berries failed, the fish failed, the rivers all failed. All, all the anchovies are gone, the shorelines are naked. And so now the beer scat is full of fur. They're, they're eating each other out there. And there should still be fish and all kinds of stuff in their scat. And berries even, and apples even. But because there was no snow in the mountains, let's keep going with those headlines anyway. It's because of all the tritium. So if you see the natural radionuclides to your left, look at the bottom one, radium and lead. 0.2 becquels a liter for millions of years. 0.5 becquels a liter, natural radionuclides for millions of years. They don't even mention natural uranium as becquels. They measure it by milligrams because it's not radioactive in the context of what we know yet. And so they don't even mention it as the artificial ones. But the uranium is the biggest production in the reactor itself. And so the tritium, the strontium, the iodine, the cesium are a byproduct of the uranium. But the artificial radionuclides at these levels in a liter of water, becquels per liter of water, are just thousands of times above what you're looking for natural. And so how did we get from there to here? We got from there to here because of Fukushima. Right, we got from there to here because of 20 million becquels, particles. Now, there's 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more 130 or 129 iodines. And that's got a 15 million year half-life, not an eight-day like iodine 131. They don't mind reporting on that one, but they don't bother telling you the ratios of these isotopes, do they? But these isotopes are from uranium. You can't have these without uranium. That went through a chain reaction, been bonded, and birded with neutrons and have extra electrons attached to them. That's why we have terrorist laws. And so the reason that we have our drinking water standard for North America and Canada right now is that. The reason it looks like that is because it is. <laughs> because it's got a 120 year life. That's why tritium is so much. Blah, blah, blah. Average person in Seattle was breathing 10 hot radioactive particles a day because there was... Now, does rain fall but a liter? This is why Paris Climate Talks are not going to mention that part, but still encourage everybody to have these reactors in their communities. Radiation from Seattle Area Survey may be withheld by the feds for national security. Gee, you got nothing to hide. What are you hiding it? Oh, because it looks like that. See? You get it yet? That's Noah's model, by the way. How about this one? Government may have delayed the level 7 rating to ease people into the harshness of this reality. Now, I'm not going to be so gentle with you. 40 million becquels of iodine 131 in a single bed of kelp. You might ask yourself, ask Woods Hole why they don't want you to send them kelp in the water samples. Huh? Instead of demonizing Dana, you might want to ask yourself that question. 
Yeah. This is sinking in a little tiny bit for you. Oh, but it's just one better kill. Shut up. Uh, unprecedented spike. 1,501 atoms of radioactive sulfur. Gee, Dana, how did that happen? Well, that was 20 million in a particles it is. There was 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more 129, and they ionize and radiate the thyroid glands nine times more effectively. That's why our drinking water looks like that. Yeah? Yeah. Let's keep going. So 1,501 atoms. It's unprecedented. This is sulfur peroxide, hydrogen, buckyballs from spraying salt water on, creating these little tiny microscopic balls. They're not solutable in water and easily transportable. Don't need a jet stream. They're being re-liberated from rain, evaporation, from convection. Uh, so how can you not breed that when you're walking through it? You know, I'll show you Dr. Raymond Gill's many studies after, but here's iodine 131. Uh, iodine 131, read the second last sentence, has a half life of 15.7 million years. But what makes it different was that it got bombarded. These isotopes originally are coming from uranium, but they got bombarded with neutrons. So, like, there's nothing even come out of there that doesn't have this attached, this problem attached to it. So, it has a new atomic weight, and then nothing on the planet has ever encountered it before, and there's no mechanism for defenses. You put two million atoms in the head of a needle, you can't see it. But if I gave you one of those atoms, you'll be liquidating your assets in 20 years. If one of the 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies doesn't bankrupt you first. Okay, let's keep going. Um, and so a force beyond human control was unleashed on Fukushima and it's impossible to stop the radioactive groundwater flowing into the Pacific well it's not only because it's not only because of the, the, the reactors melting down they detonated and they distributed their plume throughout the, the entire planet but Japan got pounded Japan got pounded from one end rate to the other. Japan is devastated from one end rate to the other. Japan, and if you don't understand that, we got to do some serious jumping around. And so what I really got done was, by getting up and running again, I, I gave myself endless work till the end of time. So I have to work till the end of time now because of what I got done. And what I'm doing, what they got done, what they done. But I'm going to show you an iconic picture that will really draw the point home. Throughout Japan, it looks like that. That's not grass, per se. That's radioactive fallout. But because the radiation went out through the country, that's why it looks like that. Right? That's why I say those things in the context of the way I say it. So, so the rain is washing all that stuff back into the ocean from Japan. They're pouring it into the dumps. It comes down from the mountains every time it rains or snows or, and melts and everything else. And true typhoons and true just a normal perspiring of the planet itself and like when it's foggy radiation levels will rise dramatically because it's liberating these radioactive emitters and the emitters we talk about like a banana is not an emitter even though they claim it is it's not it can't mutate a fruit fly it can't give you cancer it dissipates and turns to nothing in one ten thousandth of a thousandth of a second that can't harm you. The stuff we talk about is pulsing enormous amounts of energy, enormous distances, uh, every second of every day in your body, 1,440 minutes times 60 seconds a day times your lifespan. And as it's pumping, your body has to attack it. It sends out more white blood cells. They displace your oxygen cells in your blood. And so that's why you don't have that energy or that oomph or that go or that, or that uh, dur endurance or that or why you're feeling uh, disorganized and disoriented because you have a lack of oxygen. Because your body is fighting this stuff with everything it got. But it'll continue to do that till the end of time. And we know that, we know that definitively from studies 
on Beagle Dogs and Beagle Puppies. Everybody's favorite villain, Dr. Raymond Gilman. Hey, from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. And what he done was he barbarized dogs and puppies, Beagle Dogs in particular, over and over and over, over decades and decades and decades. And he killed them and killed them and killed them and killed them and killed them in big experiments where they all died, just nothing but died over and over and over and over for 35 years. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti has set the bar <laughs> for what this stuff is really like. So anybody talking about bananas or potato chips or walking in the sunshine or getting on airplanes are traitors or morons or good-natured people who are traitors and morons. I don't know, but they're not playing with a full deck, are they? Because... Like, I'm talking about the pundits, the apologists, the people that get traction, and the, 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 the evilness that is out there, too, of these people. These people, a lot of these people know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what's going on. And they just lie and lie and lie. And nobody's allowed to say anything to them or you get arrested. Nobody's allowed to come out and criticize them or, like they've done with me or you get arrested. Nobody's allowed to come out and point their fingers and say, that's a lying sack of shit from you, Vic. And from Woods Hole, oh, you're going to arrest it. They're probably on their way right now to get me again. I ain't going to be apologizing for anything I say when it's within my race to say it. And that you'll find that out in the lawsuits in the near future, won't you? Okay. Wind blew from Fukushima, Tokyo, and reactor number three exploded. What does it look like, Tina? Well, that's their version of it. Like a, like a plume. Can you imagine... A snowstorm respecting those borders? Can you imagine a rainstorm respecting those borders? Yeah, kind of. But can you imagine a, a smoke fire from, say, a forest fire uh, staying in that little zone? Do you think it's not going to migrate outside of that? Huh? Because it does. Former official in Fukushima, this is a disaster, a disaster. Of all humanity in the entire world. And look at that headline from the day. Dana, before you jump on shit, Dana, check. Look at that headline from the day. Former official. Unstoppable contamination in the Pacific Ocean is seriously menacing. It's menacing. It's menacing. Oh, I got one up and never got rid of the other one. Dana, get your act together, Dana. Uh, excuse me. So me. Dana Durnford at Hotmail.com. Former Japanese official, official, <laughs> Dana, unstoppable contamination in the Pacific Ocean is seriously menacing the U.S. West Coast. That's today's headline, December 2nd, 2015. The wave of radiation, 10 times more than the entire world's nuclear test combined. He's alluding to how terrible this really truly is now, isn't he? But look at all the other headlines that I show you, right? I can sit here for next six months and show you a new headline going back through time. The breakdown. Dana, you're back on. Get your act together, Dana. Do something. Uh-huh. Okay. Columbia medical professor inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause cancer. Just one. Just one. Just one. Uh-huh. What was going on when it was raining? What was going on when you're drinking your water? What's going on when the average person was breathing in 10 hot particles a day? I wonder, how does that work out in your mathematical calculations of bananas and potato chips and walking in the sunshine? And while we're talking about that, in some hard case, I don't know how I keep up with all this shit. Anyway, do you know, do you do know? So, you know it's a nuclear moron if they say it's like a banana? You know there's a moron, an idiot, a, or a mass murderer, an imbecile, or a creature not like anything else on this planet if they say it's like a potato chip. If they say it's like walking in the sunshine, that's a moron. If they say it's like getting on an airplane, you got to tell these people they are fucking morons. How else are we ever going to stop this nonsense? There is more, and my, my, I hate these people. There is more natural radiation in fish than there is from Japan's reactor. Tell him Dana said, shut up. And this is my favorite one. Radiation is everywhere. No one ever died from Fukushima. 
There's people like you that makes me want not to blog and let everything die because we get you for sure. Unfortunately, all the innocent and the 8 million other creatures on the planet are your victims. And I'm not going to be sitting here sleeping on the job while you're out there wrecking everybody's opportunity to have a conversation. And that's murder. To tell somebody he's not dangerous, to tell somebody to eat the fish is murder. That is murder. Period. EU funded research, Fukushima's atmospheric releases, 210 quadrillion becquels. So they're only going to tell you one one thousandth at best of what's really going on, if you, you can even hope for that. Because it's consuming the rocks, it's consuming the rebar, it's consuming the steel, it's consuming the entire site underground. It cannibalizes that. It ionizes and radiates that. That's why Chernobyl was so fucking bad. Chernobyl didn't have 400 Hiroshima bombs in the reactor. No, it consumed everything and cannibalized and ionized and radiated. That's why it was 400 Hiroshima bombs, because it turned everyday objects into a terrorist a dirty bomb, so to speak. Like every bullet you were firing in Iraq was a dirty bomb, by the looks of it. Not every one of them. 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years. No innocence, though, Dana. No, and a lot of them come from McAllister's bomb manufacturing. All they make is dirty bombs. For rifles, all the A-10 Warthog does is shoot dirty bombs. The Abrams tank, 10 pounds of solid uranium, 238. Not tipped, not coated. That's why all those soldiers had rectal cancers sitting on the munitions. Right, the 155 millimeters. Let's keep going. Chernobyl was nutty. Chernobyl was a cakewalk. Chernobyl was, but Chernobyl was terrible. Chernobyl was devastating. Chernobyl was horrible. Chernobyl might never, we, you know, it'll never go away for sure. Not might, but will never go away. But the fuel they use in Japan is completely way, way different. Way scarier. Way more of it. And it's consuming everything. Think about something burning at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Right? It's consuming everything around and ionizing and radiating it. Do you get it yet? Do you understand why the Paris climate talks don't want Fukushima? Why they arrested everybody? Why they jailed people? Why they house arrested them? Why they beat down all the protesters? Because they want to kill the planet. Because you can't stop killing the planet anyway now that Fukushima, you have to stop Fukushima. There's nothing more important. Well, I can think of a few things, but for the time being, there's nothing more important than stopping those reactors. And we're going to have to sacrifice, kill 6 or 10 million people to do it. At some point, we're going to try. I hope. It's terrifying. Nearly 5,000 nuclear plant workers suffered internal exposures May 22, 2011. Local government to consider. Well, hanging's legal in Japan. You should just go ahead and hang these people. Convict them, hang them. Get rid of them. Leave them strung up. Who cares? I don't care about these people. The government that done this. I don't care about them people. Whatever you want to do to them is good for me. I don't care. Drop them in a wood chipper. I couldn't care less. As long as you do it legally. Don't forget to cut that out and use that one too, you little pricks out there. Your days are coming. I'm talking to the, the, the nuclear PR firms will go through my whole presentation. Find me saying something salacious because I got upset. Right? Chop it out and use it. Dana's calling for violence. Don't put it in the prayer book. we got to change the laws to do it legally. I only got to say that because they'll chop it out and use it against me. Anybody else don't have to say it. No one's going to bother them. But I say it. It's chopped out used against me. So I got to say it. A mitigation that changed a lot legally. Not that I care. See, I'm not even allowed to say that. Legally. With all the restrictions I got on me. Allegedly. Most don't know, but Reactor 1 melted down in five hours. I melted down. <laughs> A few times. Less than five hours. We almost lost one third of the nation due to Fukushima. Almost. Almost. See, it's legal to hang people in Japan. You should hang that person. Typical reactor three melted earlier than reported. Wait a second. Wait. Just wait. Wait. Stay there. Don't move. Hang on. Did am I missing something here? Have you seen reactor three lately? Dana, oh yeah, it might have melted down, I'm not sure. 
<laughs> you get where I'm coming from. See, they don't show you a picture where they're saying that because you go smack them in the mouth, wouldn't you? You know what I mean, though? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? You with me? I'm just a normal person like you. I have emotions, too. I'm not saying they're good emotions. I'm just saying I got emotions. <coughs> Everybody got emotions. Let's keep going. We're boogieing. I got one, two, three, four, five, six left to go. Lethal threat from Fukushima, highly radioactive water flowing in the Pacific. Lethal? Lethal? Lethal! Let's go look at that one. I don't know if you call lethal the same as me. We covered 15,000 miles of the coastline in this zodiac. And then all these beautiful, wonderful species. And these wonderful species and the thousands of the other species are missing throughout the entire coastline. And we can say that with authority because we spent 260 days covering it. And so I think I got a little more say in this than lethal. I say it's an extinction event. And I say that because I know for a fact. Because we've done that. Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima and all the people that supported us. Despite the fact that we were vilified and attacked relentlessly the whole time. Despite the fact they were calling the hotels where I might be staying to in port and told them I was a thief and that I was a shyster, and that I was a fraudster. When all I was doing, documenting the coastline. And so that these people have fucking attacked me relentlessly, but I'm still here, ain't I? I'm still going strong, ain't I? I'm getting better every single time you attack me, don't I? I get stronger every time you attack me too, don't I? That's because I'm not your lap dog. I don't bow to bootlickers. And I don't bend down and bow and kiss the boots of crazy freaks that are murdering everything on the planet and have no kind of emotion. You know, the nuclear industry discovered a cure for apathy, but no one was interested. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists, bar nothing. Bar nothing. And so this whole planet has been radiated and we've got to get in gear. This whole planet has, is, is on its last legs and we got to make a stand. And that is not up to somebody else. Somebody else is up to us. And that asking for somebody else to do the moral ethical thing didn't work. And hasn't worked for 70 years. Uranium-234 detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle. April 9, 2011. So that blows all the apologists' Just any of these headlines bludgeon every apologist out there, yeah? And so this is why Paris don't want you to, didn't want me out there. They didn't want me talking about this when the talks were going off. They didn't want me in being able to influence a single person why this was going off. Uranium-238 spiked to 50 times normal. 50 times. 50 times. And the mayor kept quiet because they wanted their job. Police kept quiet because they didn't know any better. The government did. The government kept quiet because they wanted the power. They wanted the control. They wanted to liquidate their assets before everybody else found out. They wanted to move their loved ones out there and get them in a better position before you found out and took that. And that's throughout our country who's been doing this to us. And at the same time, trying to trap us into staying into our uh, radiated environments. Your, your, the, the earth all peroxide hydrogen buckyballs you see those balls you're looking at now? This is from a study about that. How the sulfur, when it comes in contact with the fissionable products, these enormous heats, creates this, these balls from sulfur. But they are able to ingest an atom that is ionized and radiated and has uh, extra electrons, has a new atomic weight uh, into it. And this is the stuff we're worried about. But this stuff is so tiny, it's a thousand times smaller than the speck of dust you see floating around on a sunny day. Stuff that you know you can't clean up, but you, you can still see it. But yet this, this, this is death to everything on the planet. And that the tidal pools that I covered throughout the coastline of British Columbia, that tidal pools, right behind me, they're, they're all gone. And the ocean didn't recede the coastline. And so this is why Paris Climate Talks has no interest or has a big interest in shutting people like me down and getting rid of that dissent and then victimize me through to media 
right? So all, all the other countries go. They took down the biggest talker out there. Now we can go to the plant, climate uh, Paris talks, and we can talk without worrying about Dana and the hounds and everybody else coming out and and showing them because they're down there. Their loved ones are home. They're so proud of them. But what about their loved ones come and watch this video, huh? What do you think is going to happen to them then? Do you get it yet? Do you understand why I have to do the things I do and why I'm doing the things I do and why I suffer the way I do and why I put up with that and why I, I'm dedicated to this 24-7? Because if I'm not out here, who's going to do that job? If we didn't go out and do that coastline, who would have went and done it? It wouldn't be done right now, would it? We wouldn't have the documentations up at the nuclear proctologist sitting there waiting for anybody right now, would we? Right? No, of course not. And that did, did, were we right to do what we've done? Was it important enough for everybody to sacrifice the things they sacrificed so that we could go do this? I think it was. I, I don't think that way, rather. I know it was. And that, that's why I'm back here today and every day that I can. That's why I work so hard to get this new software to actually work. That's why I struggle all day, every day, on the little things I got. And that's why I can ask people to support me. That's why I ask people to donate to me, even though I don't do it enough. Even though I don't have, you know, that's the thing about me. In one sense, I don't want to do what I'm doing. Like, I don't know, I, I don't want to think people appreciate what I, what I, when I say that, and I don't say it enough, but I don't like doing what I'm doing. I don't want to be doing what I'm doing. I can't stand it. I don't like nothing about it. I hate this with a passion. I don't like this. Uh, but what am I supposed to do? Who's supposed to do it? Am I supposed to sit there and wait for somebody else to show up? Is that, a, is that some kind of solution, though? Is there somebody else who can fill in that gap? Unfortunately not. Is there somebody that's willing to make a stand? Unfortunately not. Is there somebody out there who can get that traction that I can get? Unfortunately not again. And so how can I turn my back on that? And how could I turn my back on every the 8 million species on the planet and all the people that are going to suffer so much just because of what they've already done? And how can I turn my back when I'm vilified throughout the country? It's really easy. It's really easy to bury your head like an ostrich and, and, and forget about it and just get on, try to get on with some kind of a life. It's much more difficult to suit up each day and, and gut up and get here and take that beating that's going to get delivered to me over and over and over. Till the end of time, I'll be eviscerated, slandered, marginalized, attacked, vilified, and everything else. Do you think that'll change what I do? Do you think that'll impact me in the context of me not getting the job done? No. Do you think it, 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 it slows me down? Yes. The fact that I don't have what I need to do the job properly is, is, is hurting everybody? Yes. Uh, which brings me to that, don't it? Here's talk show coming up. Talk show, I need to raise $5,000 for this thing. You can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org or go to PayPal and donate at danadurfordhotmail.com. Talk show allows me to bring Skype in so I can do interviews. I can bring in people and then we, ha we, we own the copyright to that documentation and we can use that in our videos and presentations and documentaries and everything else. But also we bring in all your listeners and also we... We, we were able to take the video, even though it's broken, it's not framed properly and the audio is not synced up properly. This equipment that I'm talking about for 5000 delivered to me here in Powell River, um, and I'm trying to raise the money for that from here on out. I need that. I need that to do what I need to do. And that's what I'm saying. I need to do that to do what I'm doing to succeed. The same as everything I'm doing here right now, I need it. And everything I do all day long, I need to do that. And that I really do need to hire five people. That'll never happen. And I do need technicians. I do need producers. I do need all of this in order to come out and fit into the paradigm uh, that uh, the programming that people are, are indoctrinated into. And so because we know media won't come out and tell us the truth, we have to be that media. Because media won't come out and, and be able to understand the nuances, the minutiae, the, the details of the details of the details of the details, right, and be able to flush it out properly, then I don't feel that I can trust anybody else to do the job properly, that I'm forced to do it myself. And that by even saying these words, 
I'm committing myself for years and years and years of this. And that I, there's no way to switch it off because this is warranted. And that there is no there is no way back and there's not much of a way forward. But we have to strive for one. And that as we wake up the planet, many, many smarter, more endearing and intelligent people will come up with those solutions, hopefully, and we will find them and push them out there. And so that's the idea of the of the talk back is that when we got a break in story, I can bring I can get them up on Skype, enhance their picture, Adobe their audio, bring them in without even all with the one device. And really give them the platform that they deserve and at the same time help grow what we're doing. And so you can I I do need to raise this money the sooner the better. We are wasting time. And so that's why I'm pushing that because I feel that by not pushing, I'm wasting that precious time that we got. And that I don't see any other way around, only to raise the money, and that's how it's done. And that without that support and constant support, this will fall apart. And that I won't let that fall apart, so I'll constantly push. And that right now, you know, right now we have done things that is inconceivable to anybody else out there. Right now we have accomplished things that are indescribably important for everybody and there's already the majority of it up at the nuclear proctologist. Already we have forced your hands. Already we have forced out headlines. Already we have brought many on board. Many academics have spoken out. and But they are still throttled and self-censored. I won't be. I'm not. I never will be. I'm not able to. I can't be stopped. I am. I am what you wanted. I'm, I'm, I'm a manifestation of what we needed, what I wanted, what you needed, what we you wanted, I should say. And so I created that from scratch to fill in the void that was desperately needed to be filled. But I filled it in with thousands of headlines, didn't I? I filled it in with the proper format, didn't I? That, you know, and that when I, the attempts were made to take me down, you know, I came back stronger every time. Because that is what we asked for, somebody with that ability. But I had to get out of a hospital bed to do it. And I lost a wheelchair over the side of the boat, a wheelchair, my wheelchair. And I don't, and, but then I forced myself to get up and get around because that had to be done too. Because we didn't have the operation where we can bring other people. And so I had to do everything. And so that's what we've done all the way up to now. Now I, I should be able to relax and come out and, de and do what I'm doing without being attacked like I was, without being vilified like I have been and continues to be, without being, I'm not the bad person. I didn't do anything to anybody. And the lies are extraordinarily hurtful. And, and it's just not warranted to do that to me. For a paycheck. To do that to somebody for a paycheck. Do you know what that makes some that person that does this to me for a paycheck? They're not doing it at a conviction. They're doing it for a paycheck. That with no support, I will still do what I do. But, you know, I know I'm not alone. That's why I'm asking. That i got to raise $4,995 to cover that. And plus another several hundred dollars worth of odds and ends to go with it. And then i got to be able to, to get the kinks out of it. And then i got to be able to maintain it and sustain it. And, and keep it all working constantly. You hear Zoe chopping around. And that everything I do, everything I'm thinking about, the structure of what I do and how I do it, and the way I, I way I, I let out data about my personal self is not only meant to protect me, it's meant to protect you. It's meant to protect what we're trying to do. And that the more data I give these vicious thugs that are stalking me for over a year and a half straight, and that's admitted to, not alluded to, but admitted to now in the disclosures from courts, I... You know, it's been the tryingest time imaginable for any human experience coming from a culture that I come from. I'm a privileged culture, okay? I get that. But I didn't always come from that one. So, like, I paid my dues over and over and over. And that's why I'm able to stand up to the thugs and the bullies and the Malthusians because they don't intimidate me. They, they, I, don't, I don't have that. But I, I do have the urgency that i got to deal with them so I can get on with everything else, so that we can come up with ways forward. And I can assure you, I will be part of those solutions. I will be part of that format. 
I will be part of that narrative. Whether they want to or not, they're going to have to at some point deal with it because they're going to lose all tra trust and all faith in all their viewers if they don't. Because we are the defining words. Or we are the defining actions. We are the narrative itself. And that as one, as together, we have made the difference. We are the game changers. And we're not going to be bullied, intimidated, and coerced. I'm saying that today, I think, because I think they finally understand that too. I think in the last week or so that they've come to terms with this too, is that what I'm doing is necessary. What I'm doing is, war is so necessary for the people out there that are struggling with this and that have, don't even understand this yet and that are, are at some point going to find this de documentation and that is what will finally console them. The people that are covering it up, their loved ones will get that same benefit from this. And it might help. But it's better than the bananas and the potato chips and walking and sunshine fable that we have poured down our throats for 70 years and has got us into this position in the first place. I'm going to cut the stream off. It's been a tough day. We got the stream up. We got a little stream in. We had a good conversation. It didn't work out the way at the beginning. It was supposed to. I'll figure that out and put notations there if I can. If not, hopefully people at least that we're on the stream, got the logistics of what I'm saying to you, is that we got to keep pushing. you gotta, you got to support me financially so I can do the things i got to do so that I can, I can build this little operation that is able to impact everybody. I don't want the job, but it's obviously I got the job. And I will do what I continue to do and dedicate myself to it. And I will get better. And I'll find a way. There's no doubt. You know me. I will find a way forward with this. Given even a half an opportunity. Hugs for everybody. We'll be streaming tomorrow. Let's come and say goodnight to everybody. Dark Hume. Lonnie. Albert. David. Candace. Jan Brooks. Thank you, Candace. Janice. Janice. Jan. Sorry, sorry, Jan. Hugs, sweetie. RWP, thank you, Divine Rights. Lonnie, Sylvia, I'm just trying to catch names I haven't said hi to, good day to, good night to. I'm not trying to read your comments, I'll read after. So that's kind of a new uh, experience, our comments are here after the stream. Huh? How is that for? <laughs> that's a new one on us. Google usually wipes us clean. We get a thousand comments every show, and there's nothing there after the stream. Now we're starting to build back up. I know the last couple of days we got three or four hundred comments or so together or all together or on each stream or whatever it was. So really good. Terry and I'm just cruising to make sure anybody who's here previous might not be here I can say hi because they'll be back to watch it later. I'll come up and say hi to any new comments that are there. I can figure this crap out. Dana. Okay, I got to do this the hard way. Hang on. I'll bring it up for you. You can see yourself being say hi to. Hi, Kevin. Good night. Good day, everybody. Candace, Jim, uh, Dalamine. I'm going to pronounce that wrong. Rattleshark. Illusion is over. Christine, Matey. Anybody I didn't get, I'll just scroll down. I scream, you scream. Adam, Lonnie again. Miss Milky, Jan Brooks. Um, I haven't got any glasses on, so no big deal. Okay, well, we got a good stream in. A little emotional at the end of it. Because I gotta come out and ask. I got no options. What am I supposed to do? If I don't come out and ask, I need that talk show. Talk show, I gotta get this thing. It's a natural fit, blah blah blah. And so a complete package in one. In other words, everything is built right into it. It enhances the video that's coming in, gives it the extra framing, and so it gives it that smooth look. It enhances all the colors, just a click of a button. It's designed to make it stupid simple, to bring in Skype, but bring it into a whole new context with what I'm already doing, bring it into this set. Um, I'm sure we'll cover more of that as the weeks go by. Hugs for everybody. We'll see you on the next stream tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific Canada time.
um, British Columbia time, 10 a.m. Pacific Canada time, at livestream.com. All you got to do is go out there and type in Dana Durnford, and you'll see that picture right there showing up in the lower thirds. Hugs, everyone. Take care, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for the patience today. It was a rough start, but I think it was a good stream. I feel good about it anyway. Hugs, folks. <laughs>